I, I'm, and I'm impressed though. I'm impressed by uh, Shu's ability to be defended by everybody and never have to take responsibility for anything. She's like a Donald Trump. She's Teflon. Situation that happened with Xander Hall and BreadTube. And we are very fortunate to have a very special guest. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this, Dusty. I, I know your time is valuable, so thank you for that. Uh, no problem. My time's not that valuable. Yeah, but still, I, I know you, you're you taking care of your uh, your significant other, and that's an, an important facet since she was gone for so long. Yeah, that's definitely true. Appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, uh, I guess, does everyone want to do their own introductions? I'm pretty sure everyone knows who you are, Dusty, but if you want to, you can feel free to start. <laughs> Am I that infamous? Hi, I'm Dusty Smith from the Cult of Dusty. Uh, I'm the guy from the internet that everybody hates. Uh, oh, that's uh, okay. Uh, that's uh, uh, that, that's um, one way to put it. <laughs> I mean, I I don't hate you, Dusty. I appreciate it. I'm just being feeling sorry for myself. Yeah, I know. Um, no, I I genuinely like your I liked your video. Uh, uh, was it yesterday? Fuck, time is just moving so slowly. Um, I'm I'm Ospa in the dark, by the way. Uh, you can find me Ospa in the dark on Twitch. YouTube sometimes, um, uh, everywhere except Twitter, which would be uh, talking to nothing. Although technically, you can see me in Osmond the Dark on Twitter if you just want to look for when I post stuff. And how about you, Ricky? Oh, hey, uh, my name is Ricky Gay or Ricky Castle Gay on Twitter. Uh, I have a YouTube channel uh, called Ricky Gay. Um, it's pretty recent, so I don't really have a lot of videos. Uh, I really enjoy uh, Dusty's content. I uh, was pretty saddened by the, the conflict with Xanderol, and I think Xanderol was kind of in bad faith during this debate. So yeah, that's why I'm here. And, and that's primarily why, you know, I, I, I asked everyone who was kind enough to join in this panel just to give their own take and their own two cents of what was going on. So I, I, I guess since you were kind enough to be here, Dusty, I guess from all your interactions over the past week and a half to two weeks since your, your, your heat, you know, I wouldn't say heated, but a vigorous debate with Xander Hall to the aftermath, I, I guess, what are your perceptions to what your interactions have been on social media thus far? Well, it wasn't a very positive experience, but I brought it on myself, you know. Uh, I've talked about this publicly. My girlfriend is basically like my wife. We've been together for seven years. She had a grandma seizure, and she fell, and she hurt her head and had a brain injury really bad. She was in the hospital for three weeks, and I didn't get to see her because of uh, the coronavirus. And I kind of just kind of fell apart. I got fucking hammered, and I guess I was striking out in anger at people and uh, – Challenged several people to debates that I didn't even fucking remember the next day. So I brought it all on myself. And so the next week when it actually happened, I didn't even really give a shit about it anymore, to be honest with you. But I kind of felt obligated because I talked so much shit about it. And uh, so I just went on there and did it. I just wanted to have a, have a good, productive conversation. But it went pretty much exactly like I thought it was going to. It was a bunch of gotchas and him basically doing exactly what I accused him of doing, you know, uh, defending shoe, regardless of what my reasonable arguments were so i think uh his audience pretty much told him he lost he didn't put the debate up again he unlisted it and he didn't re-upload it edited like he does all his other debates and he lied about me and said i stole money from a sex worker in his advertisement video which is still up which is sort of dishonest especially for somebody that preaches platform responsibility so it was sort of disappointing but it was exactly what i expected I, I concur. And I, I want to see one of the ways I do panels like this, Dusty, is I, I don't I usually try to speak last. But Ozma or Ricky, do you guys what, are, what was your guys' perspective in regards to the situation, if I may ask? Either one, feel free to chime in. Um, Ricky, you're you, you're probably have the the more in-depth perspective, I assume. Oh, you think so? Well, I do watch a lot of uh, both Dusty and Zenderall content, so uh, I watched. I didn't watch the entire debate because it gets like it was kind of frustrating to see Zenderall being uh, really in bad faith, and I really felt like he, wa he wasn't listening to Dusty at all. Like at the beginning, you made a really good uh, metaphor with, uh, for example, someone who said uh, transphobic stuff in the past, and nobody will be questioning it. But Zenderall was like off listening, and if you were talking about Shu having transphobic videos. It just showed that he was really like not listening uh, entirely to what you were saying and all of your points. So, or or he's playing dumb. One of the two. 
possible yeah. he didn't have a response, so he was pretending to not understand what I was saying. Either way, yeah, that's also yeah, that's also a possibility. But yeah, I just really felt like he was like not really listening, and he just wanted to get over it and you know kind of silence you and like put you down because a lot of time he talked to his chat personally, being like, oh, they keep sending me a link about you lying. Like I saw someone else say that Zenerol has the like. Uh, I'm not really sure to say because I'm not English, but he has a tendency to use to weaponize his chat against his opponent. Like, like it kind of intimidate the opponent most of the time in this debate. So yeah, like, I felt like, yeah, that's what I thought was happening too. He kind of uses his his chat to supplement his debate skills. So you don't really just debate him; you debate everybody that's in his chat. That you know, his, his core fan base. You know, which was fine. I had no problem with that. You know, I'm. Yeah. As flawed as anybody, they can call me out of my bullshit. It's all good. Yeah, but if you, uh, I was on the YouTube chat, and most people in the YouTube chat were mostly Zenderall fans were uh, were like disagreeing with him. But when he went to check his YouTube chat, he said that they were all like your Sims or something. Even though most of them didn't even know you, they just say that they disagree with Zenderall, and he kind of brush away the criticism by saying that they were just simp of yeah. you. Yeah, that's an ego thing. You know, I'm sure his ego was hurt because he wasn't doing very well and he was really confident going in. So, yeah, it's fine. You know, he's young. Well, I mean, What's your yeah. perspective. In, um, in so my, my perspective is that, yes, he's young and that does make it more difficult than I'd like for him to improve. That said, it um, obviously wasn't good to lie in the video and i'm not even talking about the sex worker thing i'm talking about the the whole thing about him having a lot of evidence he clearly didn't really prepare for this um because he was tossed down in like three minutes of the debate he was like you can't just if, if you're going to prep a debate like that you you it would help if you had actual information and it is obviously concerning that there isn't the right type of pushback to get him to change. Or, obviously, there's the worst case scenario where if... Because um, sometimes these things can help make an ego, and sometimes people with egos uh, who are less likely to make changes get into um this sort of thing so and by this sort of thing i mean like youtubing uh uh twitch streaming that sort of stuff so it's very much i'm not sure what to do about sander hall i am sad they they banned me from my red although it was less you know sorry he didn't do it directly um the moderator did i assume i don't know who uh, kicked me from his Reddit. At least it wasn't as, unfortunately, it wasn't as interesting as my uh, friend who got kicked from Destiny's Reddit uh, by saying that Destiny uh, was out of touch with poor people. <laughs> well, that's kind of very minor. I think a lot of these guys are real sensitive. You know, when you're going to be in the public spotlight, especially when you're a big shit talker like I am, you definitely have to be able to take it. Otherwise, you won't survive very long. So, and see, when it, it comes to the situation, Dusty, I, I don't know if you know, you know this, but back, back on July in and out a little bit. 5th of this past, I actually went on to. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not getting it. This. Yeah, I'm only getting about every fifth word. And there's yeah, notions same. of cancel culture, which I'm very critical. Uh, we caught about like ten, maybe fifteen and, words uh, of that. Yeah. Technical you know? difficulties. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I thought it was just on my end, but. <laughs> yeah, hold, hold on a second. Yeah, you gotta shut down all so... the porn torts. 
<laughs> That's what I always find. Oh my God. Can, you, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I apologize for that. I don't know. I have a really crappy computer, guys, so I apologize. I'm going to stop streaming and I'll upload it onto my uh, Twitch and I'll record it later. But you have, you're have you doing a live stream on, on your end, right, Ozma and Ricky? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, on my end, I can do it. Like I'm on my laptop right now. My laptop is really shitty. So if I try streaming, I, I think it's, I'm going to glitch. So I decided to okay. not stream this time. <laughs> I, I am streaming it on my Twitch on my end. So... Yeah, so e either way, what I have right now um, is I'm you, recording it, and I'm just going to upload it later, So, and I'll just do the edit later with the with the segment. But no, so what I was saying, though, Dusty, is one of the things that really bugged me about this situation is I did the I checked out your entire debate for the four and a half hours, and the thing that bugged me the most is when it comes to your criticism, uh, it really bugged me. Like A lot of these individuals don't comprehend the situation when it comes to Lauren Southern. I don't know if you caught that when I mentioned that. Yeah. I brought her up in the debate, but not, you know, very strongly. Yeah, and see, the, the problem is, I, can you imagine the scenario? Like, supposedly, Lauren Southern is taking this moderate, moderate route, which we know is complete hogwash. But can you imagine if Lauren Southern was trying to go into the left or into BreadTube, yet she still had her great replacement video still up? I, I guarantee you, if they had a debate with Lauren Southern and they were trying to, like, have a discussion with her or what have you, they would ream her up the up the wazoo about her still having that video up on her channel, and and it, and it doesn't understand. It doesn't. I don't understand. How it doesn't dawn on them that the same standard and criticism you said on your end about shoe on head has a clear parallel with when it comes to like a situation with Lauren Southern. If that makes any sense. Well, I think it boils down to the fact they don't really take feminism as seriously as they take, you know, trans issues and homophobia. It's like I said, a racism. I think a lot of these people that are in this new left movement, they're holdovers from the anti-SJW movement. You know, and they grew up watching, you know, Shoe and Heads material, Chris Reagan, Amazing Atheist, all these anti-feminist videos. And I think a lot of them haven't, like, challenged, you know, their uh, the ideology that they're pretty much brainwashed with. And so they still have a lot of that baggage they're holding over from those times. And uh, I, I'm, and I'm impressed though. I'm impressed by uh, Shu's ability to be defended by everybody and never have to take responsibility for anything. She's like a Donald Trump. She's Teflon. Like I would have liked for her to like at least address this. I know recently one of the uh, a pretty popular YouTuber was on the right, uh, Hunter Avalon, uh, did left the right and did change a lot of his views, made an apology, even debunked certain of his older videos, which I think was pretty commendable of him. That would have been nice if uh, Shuan had did something similar with some of her really old video that were pretty problematic, but I'm pretty neutral towards her. I think, I think she does have kind of an ego and she doesn't want to admit that what she did was wrong because nobody really take her accountable, uh, accountable for what she did. So she doesn't really feel the need. I, I do think that she is a good person, but that doesn't excuse what she did in the past. And I do think that she should address it. So yeah, that's pretty much my opinion on she went ahead. I appreciate that. And what about you, Alex? Uh, my opinion on she went ahead is um, relatively neutral. It's it, I I don't actually know a lot a lot about she went ahead. I just understand um she well i i understand how bad the shit she did before and the fact that her turnaround seemed excessively quick and i'm not quite sure why uh uh her views changed or what the the reasoning behind it so at the moment i am relatively neutral because she has done uh, put up left wing content, but it it does seem um, more the uh, ego driven level. Um, yeah, unless I'm mixing up shoe on head with someone else. <laughs> I I assume what? I'm not. I um, might uh, did 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 shoe on head debate dusty did you want shoe on and like the the person like. Uh, um, was Sharon had the person who uh, debated Dusty, uh, Destiny and had like a, a person 
um, pop in to shout a racial slur. Is that Chew on Head? Fuck, I don't... Oh, God damn it! I doubt it. I doubt she's ever going to so get anybody. Wh- let me ask you a question here. Oh, wow. Now it's mine. Right, on, on, this is one of the things that I would like to hear your opinion on, Dusty. If you don't want to respond, I understand. But why do you feel, Dusty, that a person like Chew on Head, why do you think she wouldn't be willing to have a... Con- like, he doesn't even... Have, like, everyone you could see, but even by your own words, you're not, not big into debate. I, I would say that on par you're probably very similar to shoe on that facet like you guys aren't big into debates according to our own words so why you're cutting out again but i think the question is probably uh, why why won't you apologize me? um i think uh because she knows i'll call her out on her bullshit and she doesn't want to be made look bad just like you know I kind of did the Xander. She knows what I'll say. She knows that I, I've been fighting and feuding against all the anti SJWs for the last four years, and she's been one of the main ones. And she knows that I know all the shit she's done and put out there. And she knows that I'll ask her about it, and she doesn't want to answer for it. So she's not going to speak to me. It's really that simple, in my opinion. Yeah. Um. So let's let's ch- kind of go in- into a more positive note um in regards to this position like what do you personally think dusty would be uh, um, the avenue bread tube and maybe just do you know, okay. A bread. I'm assuming the question is something along the lines of what is my opinion on how to get bread two to move in the right direction? Yeah, so uh, you- that, that, that's the opinion I had, uh, I got as well about that. Um, I know some of the, the cutting in and out was helped by. I am so sorry for that, Dusty. Uh, uh, Ozma, can I just copy your live stream later on if you wouldn't mind? Yeah, okay? no, I'm totally fine. I, I okay, can I copy apologize. my live stream for for clips and whatnot. Uh, I just want, I, I just want I, to things, say that. things start to be choppy on my end, so that's why I turned off my video. But um, obviously, yeah. that's a uh, an, uh, that's not the root of your problem with uh, Discord, um, Iliani. Yeah, Paul. I just want to apologize. I have a really crappy computer graphics card, so I have to work with what I got. So. I'm very lucky I've been able to do the live streams I've been doing. Um, but like, to qu- just to repeat the question real quick, Dusty, like just to be back in a more positive note, other than the things that you've already said from your debates with Xander Hall and when it comes to your situation, when it comes to your live show from Friday, is there anything else that you would like to see that would be more of a positive direction you would like to see bread tube or just in principle the overall left to uh, do? Well, I mean, I actually think they're going in a positive direction. You know, I think uh, BreadTube is just like the next evolution of what the skeptic and anti hw community is. And uh, it's way better than it was. Definitely heading in a much better direction than it was. You know, and there's some bumps that need to be ironed out. I don't think they take feminism seriously enough. And I'm not really big on the ableism stuff that they get into um, too much. Um, but for the most part, I think they're doing a pretty good job overall. And uh, I'm actually heartened at the direction things are going. And what about you, Ricky and Alex? Either one of you guys want to chime in. What do you, do you guys think that there's anything that the left in your perceptions could improve on or in the same framing I've did toward Dusty in the question? Uh, do you want to go first, Alex, or I go first? Um, I, I'm going to steal in first because uh, I, I feel like saying this. I think, I, think uh, I honestly think critical thinking would do a world of good just to um help not not just uh the left but also skeptic community uh communities like where there's actual thinking about you know uh why is this position valid you know what do you do if it's wrong um uh all that sort of stuff my brain completely 
fogged on actual good critical theory questions, but the, the general principle of just thinking about what your position is, um, what's good about it, what's bad about it, just instead of just boiling things down to um, just the question part and also catchphrases. Not that catchphrases are inherently bad, but I think... Um, I just think there needs to be more critical thinking, although we're not taught that from a young age. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. They use a lot of these words like woke scode and gatekeepers and stuff that, in my opinion, they're kind of just weasel words that are used to shut down debate, you know, to just allow themselves permission to dis dismiss whatever you're saying so they don't actually have to think about your valid criticism. And I think, you know, we could do without shit like that and actually just address more of the actual criticism and points people are making. Oh, and, and also I do think, I do like the idea of taking pride in improving. I realize that, that societally that's not looked kindly upon in some ways, but at the same time I think it's um, it would be helpful for just honest improvement. So uh, I want to give, like I said, everyone a chance. But what do you think, Ricky? What is your perspective? I, I will, I'll, I'll chime in what they said. But I would like, what do you think, Ricky? Okay, regarding breadtube. Uh, well, I do. Or uh, the broader left. Like, what do you think okay. breadtube can improve on, or the broader left? I do really enjoy breadtube in general. Like, I do watch Sandral. Uh, I do watch Vosh. I do prefer Vosh over Sandral personally. But there's also a counterpoint I do enjoy. Uh, it's true that uh, the ableism, I think, Vosh doesn't really do it anymore, but Zendral still kind of excuse the use of the Arsler, which is kind of a little bit iffy for me. Uh, the fact that they do use, uh, I don't think I, I heard Vosh using it, but I I, Zendral uh, often use the term woke school. Uh, I used to not really have an issue with this word, because unlike SJW that imply that fighting for social justice is bad, Walk school sounds like, okay, they're scolding people. It's kind of, it feel a little bit condescending to scold someone on something. But at the same time, for most people, walk school is a synonym of SGW. So I do understand, and he kind of use it for anyone who kind of disagree with him or is, like there are definitely people on the left who are like, who has a, some people on the left, but I think in every spec, every group, there's always people who are more abusive or toxic. I did encounter uh, some people on the left that were really, really toxic uh, and abusive, but giving them a name that is synonymous with SJW that was used against us for any uh, any time that we care about social issues, I do think that it can be an issue. Yes, and I don't really know if they need a, they need a term for them, but. Yeah, that's pretty much my issue with some Brett Tuber. There's also yeah. uh, when it comes to the fast of woke school. So in my discussion I had with Xander Hall in July, I I mentioned this what you said right there, Ricky, which makes a lot of sense. And what I told him was, you know, it's literally synonymous with social justice warriors, and social justice warriors has similar connotations today with people like Sargon and many people on the far right with the term cultural Marxism. And that was my criticism I levied at. Uh, at uh, Xander Hall, and he himself came up with the idea during that hour and a half discussion of coming up with a new term. I'm like, I asked him, why don't you come up with a term like abusive left or irrational left or something around those lines that have no similar connotations to what the far right rhetoric is? And he agreed. And the thing that kind of shocks me to this day is this is where I thought that Xander Hall was good faith. He said, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll take your criticism to light. He said that he was going to try to do so. He even said, you can even watch a live stream where he told his uh, audience that he wanted to invent this new word or new label, but he's never done it. Um, I, I guess my qu next question would be, um, did you happen to ever catch that uh, live stream between Vosh and Shionhead back last November um, at all, Dusty? Yeah, I've caught pieces of it. Okay. Did you ha did you did you happen to remember the part where Shoe on Head literally recommended your remember you know you know you've been critic uh, you've been the one you suggested is about Shoe on Head correcting the record and doing some measure of display on correcting the record remember how that's been your mainstay of criticism mm -hmm. did you happen to remember that Shoe on Head herself during that discussion was actually the person that she she wanted to uh, do that herself did you remember catching that at all yeah but she never did she exactly. I'm just wondering, what, do you, what is your opinion on that? 
exactly what I expect to happen. I don't expect her to really take uh, responsibility for it on her main platform. I think that she thinks that if she does that, she's going to get a lot of backlash because like she can lie about it and they can lie about all they want to, but she has a giant right wing fan base still. Not all of them, of course, but there's still a lot of the holdovers from the anti SJW movement. And I think that she's worried about pissing them off and having to listen to them bitch at her. And that's why she doesn't take responsibility for it, in my opinion, but that's not a good excuse. Yeah, I mean, uh, how many subscribers did you have, Dusty, prior to your your situation in 2016, if I may ask, when it comes to how many subs you have, and then when you finally came out prior to the uh, 2016 election, how many how many subscribers did you think you lost from the time you made your anti-Trump? Like, would it be fair to say anti-Trump video? Would that be fair for you to say? <laughs> yeah, that'd be very fair. Okay, so like, how many? Like, what was the loss you experienced during that time, if I may ask? I mean, it's hard to determine exactly because you're getting new ones in and you're losing tons. But I had uh, like almost 260,000 and I have like 234,000 now. I've lost between probably uh, 700 and 1500 subscribers every single month for the last four and a half years. So um, so in, in similar regard to both uh, to both Rick, Ricky and uh, Alex, like in your own experiences over the, cause I think you said Ricky that you also had your experiences when you were younger as a teen going up and watching this uh, content that was anti SJW in nature. Am I correct? When we, when we last spoke in regards to that? Yeah. So can you tell me like, see, that's one of the things that's very unique about this panel is we all have our own unique perspectives in this situation. I would love to ask you, Ricky, in that experience, being at a younger age, being going through that, what was your initial reaction in 2016 when it came to this form of content and what maybe changed your mind or shifted your perspective? Yeah, uh, I remember back in 2016, uh, I was a teen, I was maybe 16 or 17 back then. Um, yeah, I was pretty anti-Trump and I always been on the left, but I did kind of fell into the entire state of OU pipeline because uh, I myself am LGBT and they keep like showing me like LGBT people that can, for them were cringy and I didn't want to be associated with them. So I kind of needed to, felt like I was not part of the, those cringy SGW. So I kind of watched entire SGW video because I kind of wanted to be like normal in a way. But then I realized that it didn't really make sense and those people were not bringing any uh, positive points. They were just like making fun of people for being different. And I was like, like I'm different. I was bullied for being different all my life. So uh, this is kind of when I started to stop watching anti SGW uh, videos. Uh, then I met people who were more uh, on the left than me, uh, especially on Discord. And they kind of educate me uh, that sort of like the fact that I was Back then, I was using the word SGW a lot. I was pretty uh, uh, trans med and, and biphobic back then. Uh, and those people kind of helped me like understand that that's, that was wrong. And then I discovered BreadTube. Um, well, I discovered Dusty first. Well, rediscovered because I was watching him uh, when I was a teen, when he was making more atheist content. So I rediscovered him and he, Dusty did help me uh, going more to the left. I was really surprised that his content uh, was more on the left now because at some point what kind of, well we did see on your stream uh like all the video you deleted that that was kind of the yeah. video that made me stop watching you for a moment I don't blame then, you. and then like maybe two or three years later i rediscovered your channel it was like oh i remember this guy dusty what is he doing now and you were doing like those podcasts that were like really interesting and i started like binge watching them and sometimes i managed to like catch you uh, live and watch you live um so yeah, I'd say Vosh, uh, ContraPoint, and Zenderall also help, especially ContraPoint, because when I started watching ContraPoint, I was really transmedicalist and MD-phobic, and she helped me like grow out of that, because I was kind of not assuming that I was non-binary myself. So it was, I, I had a lot of frustration against non-binary people, because they were assuming like their identity, and me, I was still in the closet. So she kind of helped me like to understand that you don't need a sword to be trans. Uh, there is like many ways to be trans. Um, so yeah, I'd say that's pretty much my experience. Awesome. Yeah, see, one of, the, one of the things I wanted to mention real quick, see, one of the astounding factors of people that are trans meds, and this is I've, one of the conflicts I have with another individual I will not name here, but one of the problems I have with this individual is they literally ignore that the scientific consensus literally describe transgender to be an umbrella term. And their whole 
conflict and their whole counter to that is they think it's because of woke ideology being invested into the universities and to uh into academia and that's the reason why they use these labels today it's 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 it has a broader implication than people actually acknowledge but alex the same thing to you what was your experience if you had any when it came to uh like 2016 and the anti-sgw scene like what was um, your experience? So my experience was I never really got into the anti-SJW scene much until, um, uh, so I had first heard about the anti-SJW thing when Jim Sterling was making fun of it. Because I used to listen to, well, um, I still listen to Jim Sterling. I, I game a lot, so... Uh, yeah, so I didn't, um, I didn't find out about it as much, although, uh, my roommate, um, uh, Zavaris or whatnot, he was falling down the SJW, anti-SJW thing, um, although he never fell down it completely, but he was starting to get, it, like, um, uh, he was starting to get into like uh, uh, a a bit like bearing um, um, Sargon, um, whatever, and then they started to get like way too ridiculous. Uh, Blair White, uh, but yeah, then they started to get way too ridiculous. And having uh, uh, me, a, 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 someone who's trans in the household um kind of made it difficult i i think a little bit more difficult for him to go all the way down that path but um yeah no i i never got into the the anti sjw stuff i yeah. i am i i envy you alex because i was knee deep um uh, i'm pretty sure you know this about me uh ready dusty but i was uh alt light for about three years and what led me down that pipeline was yeah, so I, you didn't know that about me, I take it. No, I didn't know that about you. Yeah, I so was not like for like two months, not three years though. That's a long time. Yeah, so suffice it to say, I'm not embarrassed. I'm very embarrassed by my past. I've told Alex about this. Uh, I've uh -huh. done a lot of research. What's that? Oh, yes. Yes, you have told me. <laughs> Several times. <laughs> but suffice it to say, uh, I, what really brought me down that pipeline, Dusty, was a book. I don't know if you know who Pat Buchanan was. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so I read a book that he wrote called Death of the West. See, I grew up in a religious cult known as Jehovah's Witnesses. And then from there, I went to the military. And you can imagine going from a really far uh, right wing mentality of, of in a religious cult, Christianity, to military, which is also very right wing, then down the pipeline with my own PTSD and stuff going to the Iraq. And But anyways, that's what led me down to the alt light. And I was making content for about three years from 20... 13 late 2012 2013 until 2016 till i found out it was intersex and uh gender dysphoric about a year and a half later but suffice it to say what led me uh what really shook me to my core about the the anti-sgw community is they started attacking i don't know if you remember this but there was a segment that sargon did if i i don't know if it was sargon but someone was talking about intersex and when i found that that i had inter, that i had kleinfelter syndrome uh, this I watched this segment because I still was watching their content and absorbing it, even when I was kind of like taking a break. And they were starting to demean and and reject and, and and disrespect people with intersex conditions. And that's what really shook me to my core. It's like this is they're talking about me now. You know what I mean? And yep. that's what completely changed my whole view. And it was like in the course of six months. So yeah, sorry if you didn't know that about me already, Dusty. But I've told that to a lot of other people. Hey, no problem. You know, we've all had our past and as long as you own up to it and use them as teachable moments for people to help them not make the same mistakes you made, then they're all good. I don't well, know I, how many I times. Mean, I mean, I had the the uh, shameful past of watching the uh, Game Theorist um, <laughs> channel for a while. <laughs> Matt Pat, yeah. Yeah, so, no, I, Matt, I, Matt, uh, Matt Pat has just slowly gotten more cringe. Yeah, I, well, what's <laughs> that's a different topic, but I, I guess overall, you know, because I don't, I don't know how long uh, you want to stay on, Dusty, but suffice it to say, like, 
you know, I generally concur that when it comes to bread two overall, they're doing a great and measurable work in comparison to skepticism 1.0, however you want to denote them. But I, I guess the key question is, what do you think would be a, a good, like, what do you think that bread tubers and people like outside of bread tube, and I'm not even saying that we're far apart from them, but as the, like these outsiders, quote unquote, what do you think could we as and them could do to possibly bridge the divide that we can unify the left to like, you know, how they say bully Biden and, you know, and emphasize or not emphasize, but emphasize uh, more leftist uh, policy with people like Biden and the administration that currently going to be in place. Like, what do you think? In my opinion, I think we have to hold each other accountable more without accusing each other of being woke scodes and gatekeepers and canceling everybody, you know, I don't. I think these are weasel words, basically, to get out of criticizing each other. I think we had to support each other. Like I've tried to have the guys. Like I had Valsh on my channel when he was well, before he blew up. I had the Surfs on. I had American Johnson. I've had Vadine on. So we have to try to support them, but also hold each other accountable because you know we can't really grow and evolve if we're afraid to actually call out bullshit on our own side. Did you happen to watch that clip I shared with you, Dusty, about what Xander Hall said about uh, members that they, he denoted as woke school? Did you happen to ch chance to see that? Uh, I saw the title you put on it, but I didn't have a chance to click on it yet. Yeah, so suffice it to say, I hope you take what I'm saying is truthful. You I mean, feel free to confirm what I'm saying here. But suffice it to say, he did a, uh, Xander Holt did a video in where he was talking about Peter Kauf and supposedly leaving bread too because of quote unquote woke scolds and supporting and financially supporting a turf. But suffice it to say, one of the things that really inspired me to kind of like speak out on it was in that video, he said that we should excise our bread tubers and especially himself should excise leftists from leftist communities if they get labeled a woke scold. Uh, <laughs> that's that's what, very convenient, isn't it? It's a great way to dodge criticism. Hey, just get rid of the people that are criticizing me. That yeah, sounds like so a cult. In, in regards to that, what, what does anyone have any opinions in regards to like, I don't know, maybe in a nutshell, I think that's like the worst form of gatekeeping. You know, they can say that we're doing gatekeeping because we're trying to hold people principled. But I mean, what do you guys think? Do you guys think that's a, a worser form of gatekeeping or? Yeah, that's some weasel ass shit right there. What about you and uh, Ricky and, um, and Ozma? What do you guys think about that? I mean, you can take my yeah. word for it if you want, but. You can confirm well, that I did watch. I, I I did start a video about Peter Coffin. Like I don't like Peter Coffin at all, and him. Well, it's not really about him that we're talking, but I think it's kind of dangerous. Like because anyone can be labeled a woke scold if they say something that someone didn't like. Like I do think people who are like abusive and toxic in the left should be well, maybe not exclude, but you know, maybe not accord them too many uh, attention. Like if they're like uh, generally abusive and toxic, but. Yeah, like labeling them as walk school is kind of dangerous because it, anyone could be like Dusty could be uh, labeled a walk school. I could be labeled a walk school and like be excluded just because I disagree with one of the popular bread tubers. So I think it's kind of dangerous to like put them all in a, in a category uh, rather than just judge case by case because people can have like a lot of reason why they're shitty people and you should be associated with them. So yeah, I do I do have an issue with uh, what you said. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I, to kind of like add on, but uh, I agree with you with what you just said. And one of the things that really troubles me is even by Xander Hall's own admission in that live stream when I covered it, he literally said that these people share 90% of the correlation when it comes to politics that these individuals do. Yet somehow, some way in my rationale, I don't understand this, that they're willing to accept and you know bring in people like Chris freaking Reagan into bread tube and and they're trying to like brush under the rug their past and i just i, I just to me that their priorities just seem really backwards but I, I i would like what's your opinion alex please i'm um, sorry yeah so my opinion is uh for one just in general there needs to be transparency uh you shouldn't brush your past at all um because it's it's not you shouldn't brush away pasts because Transparency is a genuine, uh, genuinely important aspect of um, just in general preventing corruption. And what you don't want is you don't want the the uh, leftist groups to do the same thing that the Democratic Party did, which was slowly shift further and further right. But Good neither, point, Alex. Um, so transparency definitely uh, needs to happen. 
uh, criticism needs to be able to occur. And yeah, you can call out uh, uh, people if they're using abusive tactics, but that's mostly helpful if you help... Um, people need to learn critical thinking. Like, it, it is so important. It's not just skepticism. You need to actually think about and process these things and make sure to use the the thinking part of your brain because otherwise it's a lot easier to it's a lot easier to be manipulated if you knee jerk and i realize there is to some degree a game that that has to be played of when it comes to affecting other people's opinions especially because we're not taught critical thinking but i i just think that i don't know we need to have a good place we need to have a well-structured transparent place that you can bring people up uh from the left and and change people's minds and i didn't put a lot of thought into my answer <laughs> But I think I think you made up. You brought up a really great point, Alex. That the correlation between what you just said and what the DNC did with other progressives is a very direct correlation to what we're kind of experiencing now. And on the highlight to that, I mean, what do you guys think, do you, uh, Dusty and uh, Ricky? Do you think like the the experiences you guys are having when it comes to some of the members of BreadTube? Do you do you see like like Alex mentioned some form of correlation to what happened there with the DNC and other progressives to uh, what you're seeing? now when it comes to certain members of Red do you, do you think do you guys have a shared perception of that as well or well I think these communities always end up kind of being clickish I whether it's the DMC or bread tube and uh, they kind of circle the wagons and defend each other from outside criticism which is one of the reasons that I don't really get involved in them too much because I can't keep my fucking mouth shut I just want to criticize everybody you know if they deserve it so uh it's hard to be inside that group but yeah, I think it's just mostly about the clicks. What about you, Ricky? What is your uh, perception of that, if you have one? Uh, well, uh, I don't really know a lot about the DNC because I'm not American. Of course. So I'm not really <laughs> involved. With... <laughs> I, guess, let me, let me, I guess from your perspective, because you're in, in French and in, in Quebec, is that correct? Uh, yeah, I'm in Quebec, French. Uh, I'm a French Canadian, so. Gotcha. So I guess in your perspective, like, is in 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 Canada in the, in the, like, I don't know the exact political framework of Canada. I apologize, but like in in a scenario when it comes to your guys's left wing party, um, is there kind of like a division between members of your left wing party and maybe more people who are further left in Canada in your section of gov in, in that in your country, or is that different or that well, situation? I well, I know there is three main party in Canada. There's the Conservative Party that is like nowhere near as right as the uh, Republican Party. We have the Liberal Party, which is pretty much the same as the Democratic Party in the U.S. And then we have actually another Democratic Party, the NP NPD, I think, who is uh, our Democratic Party, was really, really on the left. And I know that right now we have uh, Justin Trudeau, who is uh, uh, the leader of the Liberal Party, uh, he is more on the left, but he's still kind of a centrist, and they, there are some conflict between him and the leader of the Democratic Party, who is really left-leaning. And yeah, the, the left, the more leftist party in Canada, kind of get a little bit excluded uh, from politics. Like they're the least popular one, unfortunately. If you take the correlation you just mentioned there, which is a great example, do you see like a similar facet of that happening with, with members of um, BreadTube and people who are not a part of BreadTube? Uh, I, don't, I don't really know a lot of people, uh, uh, leftist YouTuber who are not on BreadTube. Uh, Dusty is not on LeftTube, but uh, on BreadTube. And yes, he's, I, I would say that I really exclude by the conversation because they do want to stick together. They do kind of a click, as Dusty said, so they don't really want to criticize each other too much. I know uh, really Grace do criticize some bread tubers sometimes, uh, but most of them like don't really uh, want to get in beef with each other. So I'd say, yes, there's kind of that. So real quick, so we can do the, because I didn't want to take too long with this, but so to kind of do the wrap up in the last few minutes, uh, I wanted to ask this really important question. And I think this is probably going to go to the core heart of it. 
Um, and I know this is going to seem like a completely far-fetched idea, but one of the things I've been mentioning is I've been kind of labeling people within the outside of bread to kind of calling them uh, basically the principled left. I know that sounds cheesy. I know that sounds uh, really just out there. But Dusty, I would like to hear your perspective on this. Do you think that people who are outside of BreadTube that you know have like a, a perspective of being principled, holding other people accountable on the left, do you think that as a facet as an option, do you think people like yourself and others need to like devise our own version of, of bread tube, like a principal left or something around. Do you think that's uh, something that we would need to do to kind of get, um, get our message out there or. I mean, to be honest with you, it'd probably be good for you guys to do that. But like, I just know me and I'm, I don't play well with others. And like, I don't, I don't fit in the groups and stuff. I always fuck it up. So like, I'm always gun shy about getting involved, you know, in, in the groups and shit for that reason. It always goes bad for me. I'm sorry. I have like traumatic experiences from every time I've ever tried it. So yeah, you, you were a part of the skeptic community from what, 2010 to 20, uh, 5, 2016. And then you had uh, your experiences with being, yeah, I can imagine like, uh, yeah. What, no, what that, about that, you that, and uh, Alex and uh, Ricky? What do you guys think? Um. So uh, for one, what comes to people on the left there there's yeah there are some people who genuinely don't work well with others there are some people who are have i I get the impression that there are some people on the left who have labeled people as bad and because of that they are looking for all the mistakes which there are aspects of that which are fine but there are aspects of that where it's just like a bit of a stretch i've seen some stretches on twitter when it comes to to criticism of bosch uh, or contrapoints or or some of the bread tubers now that said um i do think uh, uh possibly that would help but we would we have to we would have to from the start be transparent and, and try to, to hold values or whatnot and it would be hard and that's the thing about making groups it's always gonna be hard <laughs> i agree and um, what about you ricky what is your take on that question oh oh uh just to be clear uh yes i would be interested in joining into groups but to be fair i have very little online uh experience so i haven't had as much time to be traumatized anyway sorry Fair enough. so <laughs> what about you ricky in regards to uh, the question posed well i'd say there is like a lack of unity in the left like i feel like the right has like it's more easy for them to get along because they can bond over like the people they hate like you know like blair white who is with trans uh being friend with trans folks because they both hate uh certain like non-passing trans people trans people in general so it's more easy for them to get along because they just they don't like a lot of them kind of like are soul soul soulless i'd say and they just you know they just being friend like even like dave rubin with who is gay who's going to be friend with homophobes because it benefits him so they're more like they're more having like relationship that benefits them. They just bonding over who they hate and who they want to, uh, who they want to have like less rights. So while the left left uh, leftists actually more care about people. So if we don't care the same way, certain leftists can like invite. Like there's people who like say that their their main goal is like socialism or communism, and there there are others that not don't specifically. And I did see some people saying that if you're not a socialist or a communist, you're not a real leftist. And like, I think most people on the left are not necessarily like socialist. Like some of them are more sock them or I'd say some liberal could be considered leftist. So like, I would like a more unity in the left, but we are like so separate in like different ideology and we don't agree on like certain of our core beliefs. So it's kind of hard. I, like, I agree I, completely. I, like I'd like to be more friendly with uh, bread tuber because some bread tuber are like really not problematic at all. Yeah, like I don't have any general issue. I mean, I, I guess like this is just my take, with and people can disagree with me, but like I just generally don't ever ever see a problem with people like the serfs. Like I generally don't ever have it. I mean, what, what do you have? Any, like, have you ever seen any issues with like the serfs at all, Dusty? Nah, this was like a nice guy. Uh, I think yeah, my main issue is there's 
one of the guys doesn't actually exist. I've never seen him. That's my main issue. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny no yeah but like i like you know like some like i i just i'll just want to put like this like certain individuals in bread tube i just generally don't have any problems with and you know like me and alex have had you know a little bit of disagreements like when it comes to contra points and stuff but not not pretty harshly but just you know like certain yeah, facets um well the the strongest disagreement i have was a, a video well two disagreements one the the opulent video is boring as fuck um and <laughs> the other most major disagreement was the fact that she didn't bring up dawn of the dead when talking about um dystopian balls or whatever and acting like it's some new ass thing it's been around since the 70s you no know, um yeah no i i don't have a problem uh one thing i, I did want to bring up is is when it comes to uh Un um unity one of the the or unity whatever um there's a consensual aspect if people aren't fighting for you it's hard for uh it's hard to fight for people who aren't like interested in fighting for you so when people feel like they're being put on the wayside and being like the less important issue when they exist i can see how that can create some division if um definitely with the the ableism thing it's hard to it, like there are things that are just like roadblocks that that don't help with unity in my opinion yeah so uh i i greatly appreciate everyone participating this evening uh i and it, and i think we've pretty much said a good portion of things that we can do to improve the left even if some measures are people can deem to be platitudes but i think the i, I one of the things i want to do before we do this wrap up is i want to give everyone an opportunity to like what is the main forte that you would love to see the left to do like what is the what is the, i guess the final message in regards to this talk a uh, topic about bridging the divide and the unifying the left uh anyone feel free to jump in like what do you guys think is the like if there was one thing you could say to kind of touch base on this issue what would that be well, i just keep holding each other accountable while we support each other i think that's how we evolve the left in my opinion I agree. What about you, Ricky? And uh, this would be like the your you know, like your ending statement before we uh, we end this. So, uh, I'd say to be more uh, patient and open-minded with certain people that may not exactly think like us. It's important to like take like people who did shit, uh, shitty stuff to take them accountable. But I'm more speaking about people who are like, not really problematic or more leftist to be more open-minded and patient about their opinion that you may not agree with. And I say that that would be like that would be helping people to um how do I say it get along easier, like even if someone is more like a sock them or liberal or more socialist, like still trying to find uh what we agree that we have in common, like more focusing on what we agree rather than what we disagree. More I'd say that's something I would like to see in the left. Gotcha. And what about you, Alex? Um, I, I just think that, that there just needs to be a focus on the, the core thing that I feel like the left has, which is the, the putting of human beings first and being born being all you need to be valued as a human being. That's like a, a really universal thing when it comes to the the left of of center um reasoning so i i think a lot more focus on that would help yeah so the the, the only last thing i want to just say is in reference to a quote that i i have pinned on my profile um uh, from noam chomsky so i'm a huge follower of noam chomsky i uh, i think i really try to follow his philosophy and principles of secular humanism but if i can just read this real quick um this is what noam chomsky said in 1972 if i got the date correctly if we adopt the principle of universality if any if an action is wrong or right uh, for others it is right or wrong for us those who do not rise to the minimal moral level or of applying to themselves um, that the standards that apply to others, more stringent ones, in, in fact, 
plainly cannot be taken seriously when they speak on appropriateness of response, or of right or wrong, or of good or evil. Agreed. Yeah. Let me some know. All right, guys. Well, Dusty, uh, Alex, and uh, Ricky, thank you so much, guys, for participating um, for this uh, quick little discussion and panel. Uh, going over what we think are your, our unique perspectives of how we can bridge the divide and change the left. Uh, I guess real quick, I want to give every opportunity. Do you, Dusty? Do you ha are you still? Do you have anything coming up in the future other than your your podcast, or is it still Mondays and Fridays? Or yep, still Mondays and Fridays, eight p.m. Central, nine Eastern, two a.m. GMT. Come join me live, dudes. Absolutely. And uh, Alex and Ricky, are you guys working on anything? I know, you, Alex, you're still working on the Fluid Voice. Is that correct? Yeah, the Fluid Voice is on every Sunday on the the Fluid Voice channel on YouTube. To uh, This week, we have a pre-record of uh, the Step Back History Guy. Um, when we have a really good conversation there. Uh, we have a fun conversation about gender since the history of gender is a thing. <laughs> and and um, uh, also, I am... I, I am trepidatious about saying uh, there's a video I've been off and on trying to work on that may actually finally come out on Monday, but um, I, I almost don't want to promote it because... I'm not finished it with it, and it's not like up there yet. <laughs> yeah, I know how that is. And what about you, Ricky? Uh, do you guys have any? Uh, do you have any projects coming up in the pipeline that you want to mention real fast? Or, well, I, I do try to have like my own uh, streaming uh, regularly, but it's kind of hard because I'm not living alone. So I do have to deal with like people living with me. So I can stream when they're not there. With the with the pandemic, they're like often. Uh, at my place so it's kind of hard for me to have like time for my own where it's uh, calm and quiet there's also mental health issues that doesn't help and the fact that I have not a full-time job but I've still worked four day a week so that also take a lot of my time but I do want to try to be more uh, to stream more regularly like maybe not always the same day because it's really hard for me to have like a, a schedule but I do want to try at least once a week to stream and upload on my channel and and gotcha and people can find me on the same uh, thing i don't i do things off the cuff so i don't really have anything scheduled in similar part to you ricky so uh you can catch everyone here ricky uh, you're still at ricky gray at, uh, on your youtube channel is that correct yeah ricky gay uh the gay has a u after the j it's a french name i know english people are t tend to pronounce it gray like dusty did and <laughs> it was kind of funny or on the on my uh, Twitter, it's uh, Ricky Castle Gay. And Alex, you're still at Osmond in the Dark, and on Twitch and on YouTube, and the Fluid Voice as well. Yeah, um, and I'm talking to nothing on Twitter, and yeah. And then Dusty, you're still Cult of Dusty One and Cult of Dusty on YouTube. Is that still correct? Yep. Still and I, I, I'm real quick, if I can ask you this, are you still streaming on Facebook too, Dusty? Yeah, both Facebook and Twitch. Twitch TV, front slash Dusty Smith. Gotcha, gotcha. I didn't know if you still had your Facebook account because I remember you you had multiple times in the past people, Twitch, Facebook kept irrationally uh, banning you and stuff for some stupid stuff. So Yeah, I was asking for it. I was being a dickhead. I deserved it. Fair enough. And uh, again, guys, thank you so much for participating and uh, – you know, uh, we're gonna we're all in the we, uh, the live streams and recordings now, and uh, you guys take care for and thank you so much for watching. So, thanks for having yeah, me. Later. Thank you. Yeah, it was nice talking to you guys. Yep. So, like I said, we, everyone, please, if you're recording, just end it now. So. Mm -hmm.